Staley's been finishing guys via knockout or submission, you know, since his early days as an amateur. So this is a fight where you can really just kind of expect the unexpected to happen. Uh, the outcome could come at any time. Very excited for this matchup. Uh, you know, definitely well, co-main event worthy, if not main event even. You know, Josh Carter here in Fit Factory got a ton of fans. Sloan Staley looking to come and upset Josh Carter in his hometown. You know, such a, such a difference in the, just the frame between two guys. You know, Staley, shorter fighter, but obviously very uh, very built, very muscular. Josh Carter's got that, that long and lean thing going, Ooh. but but he's got some power as well. You know, when Isaac Fine trained at Fifth Factory, I heard stories about Josh Carter, you know, picking up and, and double-legging and slamming <laughs> Isaac Fine. So. Yes. Yeah, Carter's not a small guy. You know, Staley, obviously, the, the, the more muscle on his frame, but it looks like Carter actually has the larger frame of the two. I'll tell you, I've trained with, uh, <laughs> with Josh Carter. That, that inside leg kick he's throwing is nasty. Um, but I've trained with Carter. Carter's one of the strongest little guys, I don't mean to say little guy, but strongest 135ers I've ever had, had the experience of, of wrestling and rolling with. But and now, you've got to watch out for the guillotine. Sloan he's going Staley. for it. Sloan Staley has a nasty guillotine. Look how jacked he is. Of course he has a nasty guillotine. See those muscles just bulging in his arms now as he's trying to hook it, but I don't think he's got it. One what thing about fighting for a guillotine like that, if you don't get it, a lot of times you risk burning your arms out. Yeah, you're going to blow yourself when, out. Especially when you are a man that's built like Staley. You have all that blood pumping all that muscle mass. You know, sometimes it can be a, be a bad thing if you don't what, get it. What Josh can do right here is one of my favorite things to do. What Josh needs to do is stick his right hand between the legs of Sloan Staley and just lift him up. And he'll he'll, he'll get a good slam and be in side control for the, for the guillotine. It's one of my favorite moves to go for when somebody's going for a guillotine like that. I mean, it's hard to tell from this vantage point. I don't think he's got it hooked. No, he don't. He don't. When you look at the position of his of his right arm, um, I think at this point it's kind of like holding the wolf by the ears. You don't want to be there, but you don't want to let it go either. Yeah. You know, he knows he doesn't have it, but he don't want to get that breakaway point and, and allow Carter to tee off on him. Carter's back got his head out altogether, and there it goes. Look for Carter to open up with some knees right here in the clinch. Carter's got very good, you know, control. Like I said, there's the knee. Carter also probably the biggest ticket draw. You know, he does train at Fit Factory just down the road here in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. So uh, always draws a big house when he fights here at the Smoky Mountain Convention yeah. Center. Yeah, he's probably less than five miles from his gym, which is you know always fun to do. You know I, we've had some fights at our gym before, which is which is even more fun. But you know uh, Josh is just a superior athlete, and I'm sure Sloan is is, is 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 crazy athletic as well. But I mean Josh's biggest thing is probably watching out for the guillotine at this point right here, just against Sloan, just in the clinch, separates with a nice little hook. Now I have to see what happens here. You know. Obviously, Carter's going to be wary of the guillotine from here, but you got to wonder, like you guys said, uh, Staley's ability to hook it um, after you know all that, all that pressure, all that, all that stress on the arms. Um, Staley did a lot of work unsuccessfully trying to hook that submission maneuver. See so if Carter looks to set up that low kick again, or maybe a knee. Staley's got good head movement, you know. He, he has some flash knockouts himself, and a little right big hand. overhand right yeah. there. Heck of a right hand. The thing about Carter too is, is, is he, he seems to have a chin. I've never seen him drop the wobble enough like that. Good takedown defense by Carter here. Excellent takedown defense. Way to switch his hips and really get them legs out of there. You know, he went against uh, last May, I think, Adam. We were here commentating for it. Uh, him and Zach Hicks. Zach Hicks kind of threw Carter around like a rag doll with some of those takedowns early. Mm -hmm. Carter came back, won the fight by submission in the third round. Uh, MMA Insider Pro Fight of the Year nominee, by the way. But uh, now Staley, and we've talked about control, guys, and right now Staley does have the control. He's got Josh's back up against that fence, which, uh, you know, that's going to look good for him and the, and the judges if this fight does go the distance. Yeah, Staley's doing a good job pressuring him. Uh, that being said, he's not really doing much with the pressure. Uh, Carter doing a good job kind of nullifying it, not getting a takedown. Um, also has the overhooks there to prevent him from, from punching. Um, you know, Staley being the smaller guy has the leverage if he can just use it. And Carter's got good stand-up, too. He doesn't show it that often, um, but, you know, he, he was undefeated, I believe, nah, as an amateur switch. in kickboxing. He's able to spin Staley. Overrunner by Carter. 
But where he's got that reach advantage, Adam, I mean, do you think we might see Carter go to that go to that stand up? Um, you know, at some yeah, point. Yeah, I mean, this you fight? know, Car Carter, you know, he's well rounded. There, there's, you know, he's really working on the legs of Staley, and, and that's something that that a lot, a lot of the the fans and stuff. Until you've really been in, I saw open up. But an another thing too, Cage is slick tonight. Apparently, another thing too is Josh Carter's a southpaw. Uh, Sloan Staley is an orthodox fighter. So that's the thing you got to watch out for is the straight right hand and the straight left hand from Carter or the straight right hand from Sloan Staley. A little Uchimata attempt right there, a little judo action. Also probably worth noting, you know, this fight in the Bantamweight division, and Staley has never lost in a 135-pound fight. So that's, you know, maybe that plays in his factor. I don't know if he's fought. There's not a lot of Bantamweights out there who are as tall and rangy as Carter, though. Yeah, and that does have to make a difference, um, especially with the striking. But the, the thing that is, that, that's going on right now is Carter's actually controlling the grappling. Um, he's controlling once he's on the cage, even when Staley had him against the cage. He, you know, Carter was doing a good job nullifying all of his offense. Right, trading some the crowd wants some UFC. And that's the end of the first round. One round in the books here in our co-main event. Bantamweight's Josh Carter and Sullen Staley here at Valor Fights 18. And, uh, guys, I, I'd have to give that first round to, to Carter, I believe. I agree 100% with you. Uh, Josh Carter, he controlled most of the fight, controlled the stand-up, controlled 90% of the clinch. Uh, Sloan Staley has, had his back there just a little while. Um, but other than that, you know, a, a great first round for Josh Carter. I, I give it to Carter, but you also have to realize, you know, even though Carter had Staley at his back through the cage, Staley had that guillotine. It wasn't doing much, but he was still had some control there. Um, then Staley spent some time uh, pushing Carter against the cage. Again, not doing much there, but it just goes on. Uh, you know, like what the judges saw in that, if they saw that as control, even though he really wasn't very active in those positions. So I wouldn't be surprised if it goes to Staley. Staley looks very relaxed, very fresh as this second round begins. Uh, you know, you wouldn't even know he's been fighting for five minutes, guys, just the way he looks. Uh, not that Carter, I don't think cardio's ever been an issue with Carter, but it just the, the cool and co calm composure of Staley as this round starts, and Staley bowls him up against the cage here. You know, Staley does have a, a, a good, solid ground game tower. Carter's so. doing a great job as soon as he gets to the cage, getting that wizard every time, I mean, getting that wizard and prevent himself from going down. You know, it, it, that looks very good. It looks very good to the judges when you see a guy trying to take you down and you can't get taken down. It's also a, a, a mental, it's a mental thing for the guy that's trying to take you down. If he knows he can't, you know, he knows he's losing that position. And to the people that really don't know, this part of the uh, fight right here, the clinch, is the most tiring, most grueling aspect of MMA. A lot of people think they can go out there and stand up and kickbox with somebody or, or wrestle or, or, or do jiu-jitsu with somebody. But when it's coming, when it's all your body against all his body, that's the most tiring it can be, period. You say that like somebody who's been held up against the cage in New Jersey for about 15 minutes. <laughs> most definitely. Does that happen to you, Adam? That's I'm not most, sure. Most definitely happened. And that's, and that's one of Tyler Mitten's uh, you know, biggest game plans. He, he holds people there, he grinds them, and he, and he really makes them. It breaks your wheel, you know. It shows where your heart's at, whether you, whether yeah. you can get off that cage or not. When he's not distracting him with getting a tooth knocked out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot of people don't think it's an offensive thing, but it is, man. You know, I like to think of it. I'm not holding someone against the cage. You're pushing them through that cage. You're restricting yeah. their breathing with your shoulder. Your shoulder's in their sternum. They can't get a full breath. You are controlling them. Them, and the second you feel them let their breath out, their legs their legs collapse. You take them down, and you end up on top. And Staley has been able to maintain that control here for the, the vast majority of this second round. The, the thing that, that Staley's not really doing a lot of, and, and now he's kind of started to do it, is he's starting to get his head under the chin of, chin of Josh Carter. And being the shorter fighter, I know all about how you got to do that. That's the most important thing is having head pressure and shoulder control and bicep or wrist control, one of the two. If you're not doing those things like right now, he don't have it, it's really not doing anything to Josh. And now he's going back to it. That, that's, that's one thing he's got to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. The body can't go. The body can't go anywhere without the head. If you're forcing someone's head to look one way, you know their body can't attack you the other way. It's a nice very good maneuver. Kind of shoved him away after that head kick too. Staley, the way he just lowers his head and just comes in throwing those big over, you know, sweeping roundhouse punches at him. It's not something you see out of a, a whole lot of MMA fighters, you no, know? No, not at all. I mean, but it, it, it's a good move. You know, being a shorter fighter, like I said, I, I know how you got to do it. And you've, sometimes you got to come across those, come over top of those punches, come around those punches in order to make them land. It, it's, it's something that he's doing, and he, he obviously does them a lot in the gym because they're landing in the fight, you know? One thing I'm surprised with Staley is he's, when he's holding him against the cage, you know, Carter's kind of getting his legs together, but Staley's not oh, taking Staley's advantage got of that. Back. Staley had his back for just a second there, but he wasn't able to maintain that Beautiful position. Scramble. They landed kind of awkwardly there, and now Carter lands in the advantageous position. 
Uh, looks like Sloan Sailor's going for a super high percentage uh, Kimura from side control. Um, see that finish in a lot of fights these days. Uh, but is an incredible, incredible scramble by Josh Carter. <laughs> a little bit of uh, humor there, I think, by, by Adam Townsend describing the percentages. I got to check his math, I think, on that one, Tyler. That's a, that's, that's, a, that's a very high percentage, probably a 13 or 14% move. Math and Adam Townsend don't mix. It works 60% of the time, every time. Yeah. Uh, Stanley's looking for a sweep here. Carter's doing a real good job keeping his weight on him, though. Um, you know, Carter's weight's a little high on him, but I feel like he's able to hold him down there. He's nullifying his hips. I think it's a good position for Carter to be in right now. Well, I, I would say th this is when I would expect Tyler Minton to start advocating for, for, for Josh starts throwing some knees there. And there he goes there. Maybe a yeah, couple man, of them. Those little pot shots, they, they matter. You know, they add up. A hundred little shots to the head add up. You know, a lot of times they add up more than just one big shot to the head. And we have to remember, Staley's controlled the round so far. Staley's had Carter's back to it. Well, now this is the part where, where Carter's in control, but Carter has to do something with it. He needs to be throwing punches, throwing strikes to, to nullify that position and, yeah, and, yeah. and solidify it. Yeah, look for look for Sloan to explode up and, and, and hop out of this, hop back to his feet, because using the butterfly guard like he's using that something Casey Oxendine's been working with me on, and, you know, it, it, it's really he lets people get up. Josh has his he's back, got his back but he's way high. And as Sloan being as short as he is, it's going to be super hard for Josh to stay on his back right now. And if, and if Staley's able to buck him off, then Carter could potentially land in a bad spot, Adam. Carter's got to fight for those hooks, man. Yeah. Carter's way too high right now. He, he, uh, Sloan's going to explode right here in a second and pop right out the back door. Unless Carter can catch an arm or a triangle or something like that, Sloan's going to be out right here. I can hear Gene Click screaming something toward the instruction to Josh Carter. Can't pick up exactly what he's saying. I'm not sure what's – it's hard for me to tell right now, guys, exactly what Josh is going for. Maybe an arm. Final 10 seconds. It's kind of a battle on the ground here as we wrap up the second round. Round three, getting ready to begin here in this co-main event. And uh, gentlemen, on my unofficial scorecard, I would have this fight a round apiece right now. What are your thoughts? I think that's fair to say. I think Staley took that round. Staley t uh, spent a lot more time uh, pushing pushing Carter to the cage. Um, I would like to see uh, Staley be a little bit more active on that uh, once Carter puts his legs together, kind of pulling down. Carter's doing a really good job not getting taken down, but he's not using that to his advantage to actually get out once he blocks the takedown. I agree, but I still got the fight. I've st still got the fight going to Carter. I've got two rounds up for Carter. Uh, I guess I'm team Moto Besta right now, I guess is what I can say. Sloan Sailor's putting up a hell of a fight. He's landing some hard punches. Um, Sloan Sailor's corner walked out about 30 seconds early. I don't know what was up with that, but it was a very interesting fight. You can hear the crowd. Definitely a Josh Carter-friendly crowd here at the Smoky Mountain Convention Center, Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. Staley coming out. Both guys very active here in round three. Both Close guys. fight. Both guys fighting like they think they're down a round, which is really awesome. You know, I think both guys see it in their eyes. They might be one to one. They might be losing the round. They don't know. So they're both coming out trying to finish in this round. That makes for an exciting fight. Oh, Staley going for the guillotine, but I don't think. Hey, gets his head out. You wonder if maybe, uh, you know, the, the, the failed attempt of the guillotine in the first, maybe taking away some of the some of the strength and the power of Staley as he's going for that. He's going for the super high percentage. The Come Adam Tams' fa second favorite submission behind the arm triangle. That really is. Most definitely my favorite submission. Another scramble on the mat here. And back against the cage where uh, I've really not seen either guy have a clear advantage so far, Tyler. Yeah, I feel like both fighters have, have done good getting their getting their guy there. They're just not capitalizing, capitalizing on it. They're not bringing their guy down. You know, that's, no, They're not throwing a lot of strikes from there. And I think that could very much play the difference in this round. The guy who controls his opponent against the cage but actually does something with that could very much pull, uh, pull out this round. You know, it, we, we've seen a lot of crazy stuff here at Valor 18. Uh, you know, probably not the most exciting fight that we've seen here, but sometimes when you match two guys, two explosive guys, two guys who know how to finish, you get these kind of fights. It's kind of sort of stalemate fights, for lack of a better term, you know. Yeah, and a lot of it, it, two guys kind of go in there with a similar game plan. You're going to see that every time. Nice takedown from Carter. You know, Carter showing some good control. He's in a gu little bit of a guillotine right now. Probably not a lot of trouble. Yeah, maybe he is in some trouble, actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah, now, now that's kind of deep right there. 
hard to see. He's, he's got to get Carter. Job. He's got to get Carter's head to the head to the ground. If he wants to pull that he off, Carter's head he has to be on the ground. Hard to see exactly how deep it is when they're way on the other he's side. Carter's oh, tapped wow. out. Oh wow. my goodness. Go. Wow. Head not on the ground. Wrong. I was third right round on submission. That. Um, Josh Carter suffers his first pro loss. So instead, with yeah. a third round guillotine. All Carter needed to do was was keep his left hand inside of the opposite arm and posture up and put shoulder pressure in to get that. But hell, heck of a win from Sloan Staley. I mean, he comes in, down two rounds in my opinion, gets the third round finish, boys. It, it, that's hard to do. He has uh, he has silenced this Pigeon Forge crowd. Sloan Staley with the submission victory here at Valor 18. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Jimmy Dewey has caught his stuff in this fight. One minute, 58 seconds in the third round. You're with us. What's up, Mr. Yeah, Guillotine Choke. So win. So win. And here are your winners, So and Stanley going in. Stanley. Staley going into the third round. It was a tough, tough fight. You came out with a lot of aggression. Your corner telling you you were down two? No, I knew I was down too. And I've been in fights like this plenty of times where the guy's pushing on me and just sitting there trying to hold me. And that's where I got my two losses from. And it was not going to happen tonight. All right, what's next for you? Hey, February 28th, I'm going home to my state, South Carolina. And we, then we're going 72. And whoever next, that's who's next. Your winner, put your hands together, Solon Staley.